Hello and thank you for tuning into this week's Mayor's Update. As always, we have a lot of important information to share with you here this week, so please feel free to share this video with your friends, family, relatives, and anyone else you think might find this information helpful over the course of the coming week. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about a lot of growth happening here in the city. Those of you who remember some of the updates we did last year may remember that we broke the record number of building permits that were pulled here in the city last year going over a thousand permits in a year. Uh, we're actually on track right now to break that again this year if trends continue the way they're going. Uh, we've already got over 300 building permits pulled this year so far. We didn't hit that last year until May. So the fact that we're already in mid-April and we're already you know, beating last year's record shows the continued growth and development uh, happening both in our business communities but also people uh, you know, investing in their own homes and staying here in Gardner. So I want to thank you all uh, on behalf of my office and the, the city's government here uh, for continuing to invest in the city and not going somewhere else but improving what we have to offer here. It really does mean a lot and does make our city look a lot better. So thank you all very much. The demolition of the factory located at 14 Leamy Street will be starting within the next two or three weeks uh, through our Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with that program that sees different targeted um, properties and seeing how we can develop the area better. That factory has been falling in on itself for quite some time. Uh, so we'll be able to demolish that building and then put that property out for market uh, for different purposes later on uh, within this calendar year. So thank you very much to Trevor Beauregard, uh, Lindsay Butler, and everyone else who works in our Community Development and Planning Department uh, for really getting that off the ground and finding different ways that we can help improve what we have to offer here in the city by finding those blighted properties and turning blight into promise uh, later on by really invigorating the area that's there. Those of you may remember we did get a grant from the Stanton Foundation last year uh, to put in a new pavilion at the dog park. The DPW will be installing the pad that that pavilion will be built on uh, very shortly. That'll be approximately a 10 foot by 12 foot, uh, foot uh, shade pavilion over at the dog park so that on a hot day uh, that's out there our four-footed friends will have a lot of uh, shade to go in so they don't overheat and we can really control uh, some of the temperature issues that may be over there right now in a pr uh, property that doesn't have any shade in it. Uh, so it really is going to increase what we have to offer at the dog park. We'll also be working on some grading issues so there's not as much flooding over there and improving the water fountain that's there for our dogs as well. Uh, so thank you very much to Lindsay Butler uh, who, from the Department of Community Development and Planning and our DPW, Dane Arnold, uh, and everyone else who works over there uh, for doing the work to get uh, this, these improvements done at our dog park. Speaking of our DPW, there's a lot of different road projects that will be happening. On the streets that we had paving projects done last year, uh, those of you may have noticed that by the time the paving was done, it really got cold quick and then the, you know, the wet spring season happened after that. Uh, so we'll be beginning our line crosswalk and parking spot painting uh, within the next uh, probably two or three weeks here, Dougie Monroe from the Lines and Signs Department at the DPW will be going around uh, and getting all that painting done so our crosswalks will be in, our, you know, our lines will be really permanent lines on places that we've already paved. Uh, so you can start to see some of those that may result in some detours while they're paving, but we're going to try to do as much as we can on, uh, during hours that there isn't much traffic in those areas to try to reduce as much interruptions as we can with that. The state did begin milling Route 140 between Green Street and the Winchenden Town Line this past week. Uh, so there, we do expect another two or three weeks of construction and paving over in that section of the town as, uh, the city as well. Uh, so if you utilize that section to get to or from Winchenden or to or from uh, the golf course, Mount Wachusa Community College, Haywood Hospital or any of those areas, just add a couple extra minutes to commute that way and plan ahead on that route as that's going to be starting soon. Next week, uh, the week after next, May 1st, uh, the state will be down at Pearson Boulevard between the uh, Route 2 Rotary and Williams Restaurant uh, to mill and pave that section of the road as well. Uh, so that'll be great. That's an 11-year project that uh, is being funded through the State Traffic Improvement Program. The city paid for the design and the state is covering the full cost of the construction and pavement that's associated with that. So thank you very much to our partners at the state for getting that off the ground. And if you are traveling to Planet Fitness, GFA, Williams Restaurant, TD Bank, Horrigan Cleaners, or any of the other businesses in that area, again, add a couple minutes to your community after May 1st as there'll be construction going on over here. The City Council voted last week to approve the additional funding needed to finish the paving projects associated with our water uh, infrastructure improvement project that we did last year. Uh, we did need some extra funding mainly because of the increase in the cost of asphalt. The biggest ingredient in asphalt is oil 
and after the Ukrainian, uh, after the Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, and the sanctions that were laid against Russia, coupled with the pandemic inflation that's in there, we've seen a lot of increases in the price of oil. Uh, the price of a ton of asphalt went from $70 per ton to right now it's $94 per ton. Uh, in terms of sidewalks, uh, it went from probably, we budget every year about $165,000 for paving sidewalks. We've been told if we want to do the same number of sidewalks that we've done in the past to change that 165 to 195 just because, again, the cost of oil has driven the cost of asphalt up so high. Uh, but, so I want to thank the City Council for approving this increased funding that we have here. Uh, within the next probably three weeks, the first or second week of May, we're still finalizing the schedule there. Uh, crews will be milling Pearl Street, uh, everywhere that the water infrastructure project was done there. So if you had a water line installed at your house on Pearl Street, probably uh, May 9th or the week after that, you can start to see some mobilization over there. But between now and June 30th, Pearl Street, West Line Street, Woodland Avenue, and Central Street will all be milled and paved uh, with you know, digging down two, three inches and putting uh, two full coats of pavement uh, on those streets as well. So if you're traveling in those areas between, again, the beginning of May and the end of June, just know that there'll be a lot of uh, construction work in those areas, so please do make sure you're keeping an eye out uh, for different work being done there. Uh, Unitil is still up on Central Street, and uh, Rivoli is still finishing up on Pearl Street and West Line Street now in the connections, uh, and then we'll begin paving once that work is fully done there. Haywood Hospital is also uh, doing some work. They're putting in a new concrete sidewalk in front of uh, their property over on West Line Street, so that'll determine when we can, uh, excuse me, on uh, Woodland Avenue. Uh, so that'll determine when we can go in and pave that section of Woodland Avenue as well as once that project is done there. That way they're not digging into brand new pavement that we just put down. Uh, the Mass DOT is also in the process of installing new handicap uh, crosswalk ramps over by the Timpany Crossroads area at the intersection of Route uh, 68 and 2A. Uh, so if you're traveling on Timpany Boulevard or East Broadway, uh, you'll see some work being done over there. This is similar to the work that they did over on 68 on West Street last year. Uh, they're just, it's a project that the state is doing statewide. So if there's a state numbered road, they're fixing those, uh, those intersection crosswalks that are there. So you'll be seeing some work done in that section as well. Working with uh, Councillor Dernalowitz from Ward 5 and Mart, there'll be a brand new bus stop in South Gardner over in front of the old Prospect Street School being installed soon. You'll see the DPW pour the slab for that so that if you're looking to utilize Mart's bus services, uh, there'll be a place for you to do that over in South Gardner rather than having to go to Walmart or some of the other places. Uh, we are really growing what we can try to offer with our public transportation uh, with Mart's services there. So thank you very much uh, to Bruno Fisher, the administrator at uh, Mart and Councilor General Howards for really getting that off the ground so we can get a bus stop over in South Gardner. Congratulations to Knight's Nutrition who had their grand opening downtown at the intersection of Main Street and City Hall Avenue at their location. Uh, brand, op uh, brand new smoothie and tea shop over there so if you'd like to stop by and they have their ribbon cutting coming up this Thursday uh, at 1 a.m. Uh, excuse me 1 p.m. Uh, it'd be a little different the other way around. Uh, so April 28th at 1 p.m. Knight's Nutrition Ribbon Cutting. I hope you can join us there. And if not, stop by and really check out what they have to offer. Uh, they are very active on their social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram. So check them out there if you haven't as well. Uh, and speaking of our business community, we had Congresswoman Trahan here in the city uh, this past week, actually today while we're being filmed. That's why we're over at Williams Restaurant now filming uh, to announce several different new grant programs that we've launched here in the city using some of our federal American Rescue funding that we received. Uh, the first of these is a small business assistance grant program. So if your business has 50 or less employees, uh, you qualify for up to $25,000 in funding to cover costs uh, associated by your business during the pandemic shutdown between the time period of April 1st and December 31st. So we'll cover up to $25,000 in what you paid for mortgage and rental payments, uh, electricity, phone, internet, heat, water, sewer, and garbage collection services. So if your business has incurred any cost during that time period of April 1st to December, April 1st, 2020 to December 1st, uh, 2021, we'll help cover those costs up to $25,000. Uh, if you are a restaurant service or in the food service, entertainment, arts, or indoor recreational uh, services that have 75 employees or less, you qualify for up to $30,000 for the same costs as well. Uh, if you received the microenterprise grants that we gave out before, you are still el eligible 
for these grants if there are different expenses that you incurred during that time period. However, we cannot recover the expenses that the microenterprise grant covered. Uh, so if you have any questions on those programs, you can contact our City Economic Development Coordinator, Jessica DeRoy, at the Community Development and Planning Department uh, for information on that. We do have two other programs that were announced here today with Congresswoman Trahan. Uh, we'll be doing a uh, loan program for these two grants, but they are zero payment, zero interest loan programs. But the reason we're calling them loans is because we have to make sure that you stay in business for at least five years or don't sell your property in five years on the grounds that we don't want to be taking taxpayer funding to fix up a property just to have it turned back around for a higher profit for someone and then have it remain vacant. So what we're doing is uh, a loan program that's completely forgivable after five years. You don't have to pay it until after the five years is done. Uh, and if you remain in business and you remain the owner, it's completely forgiven after those five years. And again, there's zero interest. We'll cover up to 200, uh, excuse me, $2,500 in purchasing new signs, awnings, different uh, signage improvements for businesses citywide. Uh, that is, can cover 100% of the cost of the sign. Again, up to $2,500. Uh, per business owner there and we're also doing a new facade and building improvement program up to fifty thousand dollars to cover eighty percent of the cost associated with uh, fixing your facades the brickwork uh, and the different frontages of the building uh, that is there uh, that has to have the building owners signature sign off on that as well uh, so again that's going to be a big improvement for many of our businesses citywide uh, so thank you very much to Jessica DeRoy for putting those programs together and uh, for Congresswoman Trahan and our local partners at the state and local level for really putting those uh, programs together. We also launched our outdoor seating program as well. So if you're interested in doing any of our new outdoor seating programs that was passed as a result of the ordinance done by Council President Kaczynskis and I and fully approved by the City Council, uh, you can contact our Building Commissioner Roland Jean at any time and he can help walk you through that process as well. Uh, as well. So we've talked about the program that we had here with Congresswoman Trahan and several other local uh, officials and business owners that is actually going to air at the tail end of this update as well. Uh, I want to thank Matt DeSero and Andy King from our GETV uh, station for filming that event for us there and you can see it all here now. So thank you very much and as always if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this update you can contact my office at any time. Enjoy the program that we had this past week about the grant programs and I look forward to speaking with you again next week at the site of the new uh, community health center's uh, new um, construction site over on Timpany Boulevard. So thank you very much and have a great day. Well good morning everyone and thank you very much uh, for joining us here at Williams Restaurant. Uh, for a very couple of very exciting announcements that we have here this morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome our officials who we have joining us here today. Uh, from our city council, we have our council president, Elizabeth Kaczynskis, as well as our Ward 1 city councilor, James Walsh, and councilor Ron Cormier, who also serves as the chair of the Garden Redevelopment Authority. Uh, we have uh, Trevor Beauregard, who's our director of community development and planning, also the executive director of the Gardner Redevelopment Authority. Uh, a couple of other elected officials we have with us here today. We have our state representative, Jonathan Zlotnick, as well as from Senator Gobi's office, we have her legislative aide, uh, Carolyn Fennerty, and our uh, communications director from Senator Gobi's office as well, Lucas McDiarman, uh, Adam LaMontagne, town administrator from the town of Templeton. From the Chamber of Commerce, we have our director, uh, Mike Gary in the back, and uh, Rebecca Morose, who's also from the Chamber of Commerce. Our City Economic Development Coordinator, Jessica DeRoy, uh, from the North Central Mass Development Corporation, the North Central Mass Chamber of Commerce. We have uh, Travis Condon and Rebecca Beaton. Uh, we have Ellen Holmes, School Committee member from the uh, Ashburnham Westminster School District here with us as well. Uh, and several other different uh, local business owners and uh, representatives here, Patty Bergstrom from the Gardner Square 2 Downtown Business Association, uh, and more people here than uh, we expected and are very happy to be here with us. So thank you all very much. I'd like to start off just introducing us to this wonderful restaurant that we have here. Uh, Chris and Nick Vasiliadis from Williams Restaurant, third generation here uh, in the city of Gardner. Also someone who benefited from both the restaurant revitalization program at the federal level, as well as the uh, PPP program that the SBA put out. Uh, so Chris, Nick, if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about the business you have here, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Of course, thank you, Mayor. So yeah, just to introduce myself quickly, my name is Nick. This is my father, Chris. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, I'm the third generation here at the restaurant. My grandfather started this place in 83. So we've been here about 38 years now. Um, and I'm very happy and proud to say that 
you know, we've been in Gardner 38 years now. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank the mayor and congresswoman for setting up this event. Um, it's definitely going to benefit a lot of small and local businesses around here. And um, yeah, again, just want to thank you guys for being here and hosting it at Williams Restaurant. Thank you. So we have a lot of exciting announcements that'll be uh, given throughout the program that we have here, but we're going to start with the two big posters that are behind me, and you, there's some flyers up here as well for those of you who are here to take those. Uh, for those of you who will be watching on uh, Gardner Educational Television and on the city's YouTube page later on, uh, these will also be available on the city's website, www.gardner-ma.gov as well for more information. Uh, but the city received $6.1 million through the American Rescue Plan here uh, for a different usage. And one of the usages that we can do this is helping with our economic recovery out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so two, uh, three different programs that we're going to be launching beginning today, and these applications are live now, and you can see Jess DeRoy uh, for more information. Our first is our small business assistance uh, program uh, that's on the big poster back here afterward that you can read it too. Uh, this is going to be giving grant funding to local businesses who suffered losses as a result of the pandemic between April 1st, 2020 through the end of 2021. Now this grant covers things such as mortgage and rent payments, electricity costs, phone and internet costs, heat, water, sewer, and garbage collection. So if a business can show that they had to pay those expenses between the period of April 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2021, we'll help cover those costs up to $25,000 per business, just like we did with the micro enterprise grant program that we did last year through the CDBG funding that we received. Uh, this is an additional $400,000 on top of the $400,000 that we gave out last year uh, to really help those businesses out. If you received the micro enterprise grant, you are still eligible for this program if you can show that there are expenses besides those that were covered through the microenterprise grant that we gave out last year, which should be the case because the microenterprise grant only covered between July 1st, 2020 through the end of 2021. We're going back to April when the full shutdown was in full swing so that we can help cover those costs there. However, we understand that there are certain businesses in the city that are cons considered shuttered venues that had different reopening processes, restaurants, entertainment places, indoor recreational facilities, the movie theater, our bowling alleys, barber shops, different places that had different reopening plans that were tougher. Uh, where all the other businesses, if you're 50 employees or less, you qualify for this $25,000 in funding. If you fit into that restaurant or shuttered venue category, you qualify for up to $30,000 in funding if you have 75 employees or less. So we wanna make sure that we can help really rebuild out of the uh, really economic challenges that we had over the past two years with COVID. Uh, so those are the first two programs we're announcing here. And then the next are this uh, sign that we have behind me. They're considered loan programs just because we uh, have some stipulations that you have to stay in business for five years after that. Otherwise, uh, you owe us the money back uh, to make sure that we aren't just making it so something goes in so that someone can sell a building and get an extra profit there. But really, these are zero payment loans, zero interest loans. We just want to make sure that the investment stays in the city for five years. And what that means is that we'll cover up to $2,500 if a business needs Needs to purchase a new sign for their business to help make sure that their business is getting up out there uh, and uh, again zero interest zero payment and all of the information can be found on the poster here but we'll also cover up to fifty thousand dollars in facade and building improvements for the front of the building as well uh, that's up to covering up to 80% of the cost. So there is a match that has to be done on the facade and building improvements there. But $50,000 is going to go a long way if you're trying to help revamp the businesses uh, and your uh, improvements that's there. So there's a lot of funding that's going in. This is over $650,000 of our ARPA funding that we're receiving, putting back into our business community here. And that's something that we're able to do with the partnerships that we have on the federal level, uh, which is leading me to our next uh, speaker here, Congresswoman Lori Trahan, really has been a great partner for us here in the city of Gardner. And through the partnerships that we've had through the pandemic, over 
50 million dollars close to that has come not only just into the city's hands but directly into the business community that we have here uh and she can certainly talk on that on her own so everyone my good friend and partner here and in, in the city of gardner and a good friend to us all congresswoman uh, Lori trahan thank you Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Nicholson, uh, and thank you to Chris and Nick, who are no longer with us, but of course, they're cooking and they're busy uh, making sure that this wonderful family business stays, uh, stays afloat. Uh, it's so great to be here alongside all of you. Uh, certainly, I get the pleasure of working with some pretty incredible state and local uh, partners to uh, not only bring resources uh, to Gardner and the surrounding communities, but really to work hand in hand to hear what the community needs uh, and respond uh, to those to those needs. Uh, Representative Zlotnick, uh, I know the team from Senator Gobi's team is here, Council President Kaczynskis, all the city councilors, the community leaders, uh, and the small business owners and advocates uh, who support and understand the need for a program uh, like this one. There's no question that small businesses are the heart of any community, uh, but they've also been the hardest hit during, uh, during the pandemic. I've heard more stories than, than I can count uh, on the tremendous perseverance from restaurant owners, gift shop uh, owners, and so many more business owners who had to overcome incredible challenges uh, to keep their doors open, uh, to keep staff on the payroll. And many, uh, like Chris and Nick, they took advantage of relief programs passed by Congress, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, idle expansion, uh, certainly the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. But for every business that was able to access those uh, business saving funds, many others were left out uh, because of the incredibly high demand for aid in communities across our country. Uh, sadly, many of those businesses were forced to shut their doors, um, some of them for, for good. Uh, and for many other businesses, including those who were able, that were able to access relief uh, these past two years, they're still only hanging on by a thread. Um, that's where a program like the one Mayor Nicholson is launching, this new grant opportunity, uh, is going to come through, and it's going to come through in a really big way, uh, providing grants of up to $30,000 to offset uh, pandemic losses or uh, zero payment, zero interest loan funding for exterior uh, upgrades. Businesses will be able to reinvest uh, in their workers, in their services, and certainly we all get to benefit from that reinvestment in our community. Uh, and that's exactly what Congress intended uh, when we included funding for local governments like Gardner in the American Rescue Plan. Uh, and I just have to commend uh, Mayor Nicholson and the council for putting a portion of the city's federal funding allocation to such great use. Uh, you know, I was proud uh, to vote most recently uh, in the last couple of weeks for more funding for our small businesses who missed out on earlier rounds of relief by replenishing the Restaurant Revitalization Fund and building on the progress Gardner is making here today. Uh, so as, as many things that we do in the House, uh, the Senate is, uh, the ball is in their court. Uh, we're certainly hopeful that they um, uh, take this legislation up immediately. And, and when they do, uh, I know everyone here in this room looks forward uh, to working, to continue working with our, with our small businesses in Gardner to make sure that they continue getting the relief they deserve. So once again, I wanna just thank Mayor Nicholson and I wanna thank all of you for banding together uh, as a community to make Gardner uh, and to continue making Gardner uh, a place where people are proud uh, to live and work and certainly call home. Thank you so much. Now the programs that we've been doing to help boost our uh, business community and just our general economy here in the city of Gardner certainly haven't just been local and federal, but we've also had a lot of strong partners at the state level as well. Uh, if you're driving through downtown for the, I mean, currently or over the course of the past few years, you've seen a lot of construction work that's being done there. And a lot of that's due in part to almost half a million dollars in state grant funding that we've received alone just in construction, let alone the four, uh, 
almost nine million dollars that we've seen in new uh, you know renovation projects and construction projects to help boost the buildings that are there uh, so please join me in welcoming a very good partner that we have at the state house representative Zlotnick thank you Uh, so, so thank you, and I really appreciate uh, the Congresswoman coming here today because so many of the things that we've done since the start of uh, the pandemic and that we're going to continue to be rolling out, not just this year, but over the next coming years, really would not have been possible had the federal government not stepped up and helped us out. The reality of the situation is that, that individual cities and towns uh, don't have these kind of resources when these types of crises strike, and neither do individual states. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm so grateful that the federal government stepped up and we, we, have, good, we have good representation there, uh, stepped up at the start of this crisis, what really was a, a nationwide and global crisis, uh, to make sure that we could do, do what we could uh, to help those that we could. Um, and that's why we're so grateful for these programs that are being announced today, all the ones we've been able to do over the last couple of years, because the reality of the situation is, what business can survive being closed for months, let alone weeks, and that's what we had to do to allow the medical community uh, time to get their arms around what was going on at the start of the, at the, start of the coronavirus pandemic and that we're still uh, dealing with. Um, but there were so many instances where the federal government provided those funds at crucial moments, whether it was to cities and towns to utilize as, as we saw fit on the local level, same thing at the state, or ESSER funds that went to help the schools, or monies that went directly to the hospital, or even money that came from ARPA uh, that's making investments in Haywood Hospital right here in Gardner. All those things would not have been possible had the federal government not stepped up and had we not had uh, the people in place that we do to make sure that those needs that we have locally and at the state level were being adequately advocated for. So again, thank you so much. Uh, and we look forward to, uh, to rolling out more of those programs and more of those investments over the coming years. Thanks, you. And besides those programs here, we also have our new broadband uh, program that we've been doing with the Congresswoman's help. We were able to expand, expand broadband wires to the last four streets in Gardner that didn't have broadband before. Some of that came just from direct federal funding. Uh, some of it came from our ARPA funding that we've had here too. Now that we've uh, mentioned the ESSER funds and things that we've done in our schools, we've been able to track over the course of the past couple years who in our school districts have been logging on to their school issued laptops that we purchased with the federal funding we received through the CARES Act so that we can now go out and see they've got access to broadband but who is actually capable of connecting to the broadband so that's going to be our next step that we'll be working with through the different grant programs issued through the federal infrastructure bill uh, that was just passed through the bipartisan infrastructure bill there's a lot more that we've been doing here but on top of the different federal programs, different state programs. We've also stepped up on our city side too, working with our city council to help boost what we've offered, particularly with our restaurants uh, and our outdoor seating program that we've launched here too. Uh, and to talk about that a little bit, we have our city council president, Elizabeth Kaczynskis, who is the counselor who proposed this ordinance before the city council that has since been signed and implemented. That permit application went live last week. Uh, so if you are a restaurant inter interested in new outdoor seating opportunities, you can contact our building department through our building commissioner, Roland Jean. Uh, but Lizzie, why don't you give us a heads up on that? Everyone, our city council president, council pr uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kaczynskis, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you all, and I certainly echo um, what everybody up here said. It's, you know, it really, truly does take um, a full team, whether it's the federal, local, state level, to be able to get things done. And we certainly, um, we do that in Gardner. We work really well with everyone um, that works with us and within the community, all of our, our wonderful business owners and um, everyone at, at City Hall, um, Director Beargard's department, they just do a wonderful job. And I certainly um, appreciate that on the city council side of things when we get as, as much information as, as we do from our constituents and what their needs are. And certainly throughout the pandemic, we we, we did receive a lot of that from, from local businesses. And um, so when it came to the outdoor restaurant seating and um, different services that became available to our restaurants that they had to be closed for many months and they um, were only to open to a certain capacity, they could only do takeout for a certain amount of time. Uh, when the state came out with the 
different guidelines for outdoor seating, um, it really worked for a lot of the businesses and gardeners. So um, when the uh, city went out and talked to the businesses to see what was going on and, and how that worked for them, they found those new guidelines to be really convenient for them to be able to um, host outdoor seating. And now that where we're at now, it seems like they wanted to continue to be able to do that. So we looked at what was um, currently available to them to be able to get a permit. And um, I did propose the ordinance with Mayor Nicholson, which she didn't say, but we did this together. And I was so glad when it went before the council, um, the council considered it, we were able to pass it. And now those guidelines are a lot more accessible to our different uh, restaurants within the city and so um, the permitting process is live and they're ready to go just for the the nice weather maybe the wind will hold out a little bit so it doesn't blow their tables over um, but we do have a lot of outdoor seating downtown as well that came as a result of needing to distance but I think it really brought us together more because we have more options in the city to to be able to um, you know give our businesses um, a different avenue for them to be able to do business so uh, when that came forward it was just something that came before the council and we were able to to pass it and I'm, I'm so glad that we did um, so thank you again everyone for being here today and, and thank you all as well we met uh, we've talked a lot about how we've done a lot of work in getting to where we are now. The original grant money we gave out last year with the microenterprise funds that we received through the Federal Community Development Block Grant funds, uh, and that was our square one, and this is our square two. And a lot of people ask us, what is G the Gardner Square Two organization? Uh, well, it was founded the year my parents met, so I also had to find out. Uh, but it was when the Business Association got together, uh, they said, we've already got square one down. We've got our businesses here. How do we keep them going? It's time to move on to square two. Uh, so to talk a little bit about the business community's perspective on this, we have Gardner Square Two's president this year, Patty Bergstrom, owner of the Velvet Goose. Patty. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, made more beautiful by Congresswoman Trahan coming with all this grant funding. And everything here, it has been going so well due to the leadership of our great mayor, our city councilor, our GRA. Um, I've had my little shop, the Velvet Goose, for 35 years in downtown Gardner. Um, yes, yeah, so Mike's parents hadn't met yet and he hadn't been born yet. But um, <laughs> he's our leader now. At this point in downtown Gardner, we have nine buildings that are under agreement for changes in ownership. We have six businesses that have opened since the pa pandemic. We have so much positivity in downtown. It is just a beautiful day every day in our downtown. A lot of our businesses did take advantage of the first round of grant funding and were able to get that boost that they need. But the truth is, it's tougher now than it's ever been. In little businesses, the manufacturing delays, the shortages, the extra freight costs, the container costs, the delay costs, the UPS lost boxes, it is, it's never been harder. So that they can go back in and get some funds will definitely be a big boost. Um, also that we can get some new signage and that we're with all the millions that are going to go into downtown for sidewalks, lighting, crosswalks, new building restoration, be able to get new signage is huge for us too. So we um, on behalf of downtown are just delighted at where things are at this point in terms of the assistance that we're getting. So thank you. That's all I want to say today. <laughs> Uh, lastly, to close out here, we've talked about a couple of our community partners. Christy from Mount Wachusa Community College uh, did bring us a couple of the forms from the new mass hire programs that are here. So if you are uh, looking for the, if you're a business owner here looking for information on the new hiring programs here, uh, there is a flyer up here along with a information sheet about the new outdoor seating ordinance that Council President Kaczynski has talked about and a smaller version of these posters here because we figured you couldn't take those home in your pocket um, about how those two new, those three or four new grant programs that we're talking about are going to be released as well. I also just want to talk a little bit about our new partnerships that we have with the uh, North Central Mass Development Corporation, uh, who will be starting a new regional business investment fund here for our region. Uh, this is a new 
uh, loan program that'll be uh, given out, and I'm just going to read the information that they've given us here. The Regional Business Investment Program uh, will provide low to no cost funds to developers for engineering, soft costs, site work, infrastructure, and hard costs for uh, project specific developments in the 26 communities of the one North Central Regional Business Development Service Area. Uh, Gardner, along with Fitchburg and the North Central Chamber of Commerce, uh, have each pitched in $250,000 of our recovery funding too, uh, to be able to invest that funds and the proceeds from that uh, that investment will be given out to help those businesses with those costs. There was a similar program originally put in uh, the year I was born, 1994. So that was the last time that there was a big investment like this put into the business community in this area. Uh, so we're happy to continue to work and partner with the North Central Development Corporation. So thank you, Travis. Thank you, Becky, for including Gardner in that. Uh, and the communities that have pitched in will also be prioritized in that funding as well. So it's great to see that coming into Gardner as well. And I just want to close by saying this is how government should work. It's a group of people at the local, state, and federal level coming together to we, our, our theme through all of this has been coming together to grow Gardner, and that's really what this is. It's all of us coming together to build a place that people are proud to call their home, proud to open a business in, and proud to stay in. Patty mentioned the businesses that we, uh, the six businesses that have opened within the past six months in the city of Gardner. We've got close to 17, 18 businesses that have opened their doors here in the past two years, despite the challenges in the pandemic. We've got close to 60 new business opportunities in the downtown area that will be opening up within the next six months to a year with the new building changes that will happen in the downtown area. The Flatiron Building is going to have its own, that will just be 100% business and commercial space. The uh, building, the Garboos building downtown is going to have commercial on the first two floors and there's still work being done with other buildings that are being downtown. There's never been this much opportunity in the city to grow what we have here, to build on what we have here and just put our next foot forward and set us forward into the next decade, let alone generation and beyond here. So I want to say thank you very much to all of our partners in the private sector and our different sectors of government. I want to thank everyone who made this event possible, Matt and Andy from GETV for filming with us here today, Colin and Rachel from my office for uh, putting all the information sheets together, Dougie and Dane from our DPW for helping us with setup today, Emily from Congresswoman Johan's office for being on the phone with me most of the past week to make sure that this could work, uh, Trevor and just for really building these programs and putting them together. It's really been something that I'm proud to work with the administration that we've had, particularly with our community development department here today. And I'm proud to work with you all and call this city my home. So let's really take advantage of this and set an example for the region and the state to follow with how we should be working together and um, growing our community. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the food that we have up here and let's get going. Thank you. Thank you.